share with you a blessing. I shared it with our Sunday school class, and I've uh, shared it with a couple of other folks. Uh, and we thank the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for our new parking lot. Amen. You see all the work that's been going on out here this week. We thank God for blessing us with that. Uh, amen. We had several, we had three different companies and come and give us a price uh, for the concrete that we had laid out here. Uh, we had anywhere uh, from $28,000 quote to a $35,000 quote. Uh, we went with the best quote because not only was it less money, it was actually more parking lot, uh, uh, almost 1,400 more square feet uh, than what the highest bidder had bid, uh, had given us. Uh, and so we did not quite have all the funds to cover that, but the company was kind enough uh, uh, to even do it for less than what he originally quoted, which was $28,000. They agreed to do it for $26,000. Uh, and then when I left the there Tuesday, uh, they had agreed to uh, let us pay the other $1,000 out uh, uh, on payments uh, uh, with a couple, within a couple of months. So I left there, we left there owing $1,000 uh, to Carolina Concrete uh, Finishing. Uh, we got a statement in the mail Thursday, and at the bottom of that statement, it said, Paid in full. Amen. Amen. So, not only did we get a, 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 a more concrete, which we probably, as I look at it, we need uh, more than what we've got, but that's all right. We'll, we'll do with what we have right now. Right. Amen. And uh, thank the Lord for it. We got it to, uh, at a much lower price, $10,000 less uh, than the highest bidder. And they did an outstanding job. Uh, their men were very respectful while they were here. Uh, they they worked hard. They, were, they, they cleaned up their mess. Uh, as a matter of fact, they left our property looking better than what it was when they came here. They did a lot of extra work work, uh, especially along this hill uh, that they did not have to do. Amen. And so I thank God uh, for that. And you look around you today. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. You're blessed to be a part of this church. Amen. Amen. You're blessed to be here today. I'm blessed to know you, and but most importantly, know the Lord. So we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. And we're moving forward in Jesus' name. we got a lot. This month is full. Amen. A lot going on. Very, very busy month uh, this coming weekend. Uh, folks, uh, rest up Monday, Tuesday. Be here Wednesday. Uh, get you some good rest Thursday and Friday. We're going to gather here for prayer Friday evening. We're going to have a prayer meeting. And then we're coming. We're not coming to have a Bible lesson or a Bible study. We're going to come together and have a prayer meeting. Amen. And that prayer meeting is to focus on our weekend of celebration. And not only our weekend, but we're also going to focus on the next weekend for the Carolina Crusades. Amen. But we're believing God for great things as we celebrate 13 years. Amen. This church is now a teenager. Hallelujah. And we're going to get rebellious in a good kind of way. Amen. We're going to, we're going to rebel against the evil of this world. We're going to rebel against the things, uh, the, the constraints that the world is trying to place upon the church. Somebody say amen. 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 And we're going to grow strong and be what God wants us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Word. Amen. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 and verse Verse 9. Amen. You, uh, this is all about Jesus today, but when it's about Him, He makes it about you. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Very, very familiar scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Hallelujah. And I was all over the map uh, the last couple of days. Amen. Been working like crazy and then coming out here and once again thank you to everyone who has worked on outreach worked on on beautifying this property uh we won't like i said earlier we won't mention any names uh but thank you uh, your blessing god is going to bless you if he hasn't already he's going to continue uh, to bless you amen and uh was surprised i pulled up the other day and uh, 
uh, I had only made mention to a few people about what we were going to do uh, here, and there was somebody else uh, uh, out there working too. Didn't even get asked. I'm telling you, I thank God I'm a part of the church. Uh, you don't have to ask somebody. They find out there's work to do. Hey, I'm going to be there and do it, and I'm going to do my my part. Amen. So we thank the Lord for that. First Peter chapter two and verse nine says, "But ye, if I say me." Amen. This scripture is to you. If you're under the sound of my voice today, and I thank you. Amen. Uh, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you. Uh -huh. Amen. Each and every one of us here today. You have been called. That's right. Called of God. You say, well, I, I, I just decided to come here on my own. No, God's been dealing with you. God has been working on you. The Spirit, and if it hasn't, you better hope and pray. I'm here because some cute little girl asked me to come to church. Or I'm here because my mom is making me come here. Uh, I want you to understand. No, it's not that. Uh, it is God is working uh, on your heart. And He is calling you. Uh, amen. So He, he should be you show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. We've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man, what a calling. Amen. What a calling. Today I want to preach to you for just a few minutes. Uh, amen. And don't hold me to that. I'll do my best to do that. Amen. Called of God. Amen call of God. Lord, I ask you to anoint our hearts and our minds, Lord, in this word that is so real and alive. Lord, let it get a hold of our hearts and our spirits today. If there's somebody here today that has never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues, I, I pray, God, today that they would repent of their sins and they would be filled with your spirit today, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, uh, that the praises that have gone forth to show your excellence, Lord, uh, would stir up the hearts and souls, uh, amen, of each and every person that is here, Lord. If I'm here and I've got to, uh, the Holy Ghost, I want to leave here today more on fire for you, Lord Jesus. More with more of an understanding and knowing that it's a blessing to be called of God in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. 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 Give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise and you may be seated. Hallelujah. You are called out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. This world that we are living in, and I want everybody that's a part of this church to understand, amen, the most important thing to ever happen in your life is not to get your driver's license. It is not to get a degree. It is not to get married. It is not to get that job that you want, to be a professional athlete or whatever it is the greatest thing that could ever happen to you is to be called of God out of, to, out of the world into the marvelous kingdom that he rules and he reigns over can somebody say amen the greatest thing that could ever happen to any of us is not to walk to the uh, the mailbox and open up that check and, and, and get a whole bunch of, a, a big million or two or three million dollar check the greatest thing to ever happen to us uh, is that we could repent of our sins, uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, and be filled with the gift uh, yes. of the Holy Ghost. Uh, yes. Salvation uh, given to each and every one of us. Uh, amen. And it doesn't just happen. Uh, it happens because God reaches out and gets a hold of you. Uh, young person, I want you to understand today, uh, I don't care what you're wrapped up in, and you need to get unwrapped uh, in all the things that you're wrapped up in. Uh, Mama and Daddy, listen to me. You're the same way. You're wrapped up in a whole lot of stuff. Uh -huh. You need to get unwrapped from that whole, whole uh, that whole lot of stuff. Amen. And get wrapped up, tied up, and tangled in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. The most important thing to happen to you is knowing that Jesus has placed his name over you, that he's forgiven you of your sins, and that he's written your name in the Lamb's book of life. That's the best thing. And it doesn't just happen. I mean, you're here because God has called you here. 
You are in the kingdom because God knows your name. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. And we're called out of this world. Amen. To be in a place where there's light and not darkness. Amen. And once we get called into this place where God wants us, honey, don't you ever go out that door again. Don't you ever go back to darkness again. Amen. If you've been forgiven of your sins and you've been given salvation, hey, you need to hold on to it. Uh, the wise man in Proverbs said, buy the truth and sell it not. What God has given you is the truth. Amen. And Jesus said, I'm the way, uh, I am the way, the light, uh, and the truth. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. Get a hold of this thing. Amen. If you're going to sell out to anything, it needs to be to Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're going to be committed to anything in this world, it needs to be to God and His kingdom. I say it once, if I say it a thousand times, if you are sold out to anything, amen, it should be the kingdom of God. If you're known for anything, it should be that you are His. You belong to Him. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 I'm called out of this. Amen. I'm called into a place. Amen. Don't you get wrapped up. Don't you get tied up. Don't you get contaminated by the sins of this world. You're called out of there. Amen. And if you do what Peter said in this scripture today, if you'll show forth the praises. Yes. Uh-huh. Do it like you ought to. You'll fall in love uh, with Him like you ought to be in love with Him uh, and the world. Uh, ladies, uh, the world right. will never get your attention. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Told the church Wednesday night. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a 13 year old pastor now. I've been pastoring for 13 years, so I'm now a teenager. Hallelujah. I, I might act like a, a teenager a little bit. I'm going to do some things uh, that I've never done before. Go ahead. Amen. I, 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 oh, you mean preach on the roof? No, I've preached on the roof before. I don't have to do that. <laughs> Amen. I had somebody tell me this week, uh, hey, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come to your church when you get back up there and, and preach again. Well, our insurance company put a stop to that. Oh. And then they, they said you can't get up there anymore because we can't, we can't protect you anymore because if you fall off uh, uh, we don't want to have to pay for that uh, that's not covered in your insurance claim so I, I can't do that and I want you to understand folks uh, amen this world we are fighting a war you've been called out of this world uh, amen it's time that we quit patty caking it's time that we quit worrying about your ego if you're going to get aggravated if the pastor says this uh, or that to you folks uh, I'm preaching the word of God if you don't like it uh, hey you can leave don't let that door hit you uh, and everybody say amen. amen hallelujah i want you to understand today i don't care amen we've got days weeks months maybe just a few years left so i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna worry hey there's some things in this bible that says you need to live a certain way if you're not willing to live it if you're not willing to die out to this you're gonna end up in hell but you're gonna go to hell over my dead body Hallelujah. I know it may not be popular to tell you that you need to act and live a certain way. It may not be popular to tell you that you need to dress a certain way. But this is not a popularity contest. Amen. This is a battle. This is a war. And this is a race. It may not be popular to tell you, hey, there's some places that you shouldn't go. There's some things that you shouldn't do. There's some movies you shouldn't watch. Amen. There's some music you shouldn't listen to. Uh-huh. And it's not popular. I'm telling you, you've been called out of that garbage. Get rid of that junk. Mamas and daddies, if your kids are listening to garbage, if you're listening to garbage, God help you. So I can't uh, watch uh, something that doesn't all everything I watch uh, has uh, bad language in it. Well, guess what? Stop watching it. Well, we need a little bit of this or a little bit of that. No, all we need is a little bit of Jesus. That's good. 
We talk, oh, we well, we need to. Uh, we don't want the world to attract uh, our children. There's so much out there. There's so much calling and, and drawing us uh, away. You want to know why uh, it's pulling us away? Because we got our eyes off of what it needs to yeah, be on. That's right. I mean, if we show forth the praises of the Lord. Amen. If we show forth the praises of, of the Lord, we're, we're lifting Him up. We're falling in love with Him. All of our attention, all of our adoration is on Him where it's supposed to be. You want to know why we get attracted by the world? Because our eyes come off of the Lord. Uh-huh. Men, uh, uh, you want to know why uh, you're looking at somebody other than your wife? Uh, hopefully that's not happening. But she's not the woman uh, that she's supposed to be. God help her. We'll pray for her. And I know God is still in the miracle working business. Uh, can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. You keep your eyes on your little lady. That's right. You won't have to worry about the other ladies at work or anywhere else in the store. Hallelujah. If I put all my praise and my adoration to tell this woman how beautiful she is, how lovely she is, how sexy she is, I'm married. I can say that. Amen. Men, uh, amen. You need to think your wife is sexy. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Get, everybody say amen. amen. I don't care. You don't have to think my I'm glad you don't think my wife's sexy. <laughs> amen. Because we might have to have a fight up in here uh, today. But I want you to understand if I keep my eyes on my wife, uh, I don't have to worry about looking at that little uh, lady that's at work. Can you say amen? Amen. Hey man, and there's something, uh, you say, well, uh, uh, you know, you just can't help it the way uh, that they dress nowadays. And I, I understand, uh, hey man, they don't dress right. They're showing off stuff uh, that God uh, is not intended. Ladies, uh, men, when you walk in this church, uh, you better not be showing anything off. We're here to show forth the praise. You, God did not call you out of darkness to come in here and show off your flesh. He called you out of darkness to come into this place and show forth the praises. Men and women alike. Men, if you're all buff, don't be wearing them tight shirts so everybody sees your, 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 your pecs and your uh, biceps and uh, uh, your, your chest muscle. We don't want to see that. We come here to show off God. Can you say amen? Amen. Young people, old people, let us understand we're called out of the world. Yes. Right. Amen. Get, get, we need to, and, and I don't know why I'm going this way. Get your head out of the TV. Get your head out of the movies. Get your head out of the magazines. And then the glamour. Oh, this is how you need to look. This is what you need to dress like. No, but hey, it's like this. God said, let a man be a man and a woman be a woman. A man ought to dress like a man. A woman ought to dress like a woman. And then the scripture says that we should not adorn ourselves with gold and pearl and fine array. That's what the Bible says. Amen. When you look at me, and I know I may not be anything good to look at, that's fine. Amen. I don't care. Amen. But I want you to see Jesus. I want you to see something, something that's original and natural. It's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I've been called out of this world. Amen. I'm here to show forth the praises uh, amen, of who, Him who has called me out. Uh, amen. I, I want you to say, well, I just can't help it. The world has a pull on me. Hey, when you fall in love with Jesus like you're supposed to be in love with Jesus. Yeah. You're in love. Woo. You see, I want you to understand, if I love my wife the way that I'm supposed to love my wife, amen, there's no, it doesn't matter how good looking she is, it doesn't matter how much money she has, I mean, it doesn't matter anything what she gets. Hey, because I'm in love with this lady. I mean, I'm in love with Jesus. The devil can come at me with everything that he wants to. He can tempt me. He can try me. He can cause a havoc to happen in my life if he wants to. Amen. But I, if God allows him to do that. But when I'm in love with Jesus, there is nothing that will pull me away. That's 
when I love this church the way that I'm supposed to love this church and realize that I was called out in darkness uh, to be in this church uh, right here. Uh, amen. There's no other uh, thing. Uh, oh, well, I got to get home to see a ball game or oh, so-and-so's church is having this, uh, so we're going to go there that Sunday. Folks, uh, I want you to understand something. Uh, when you're given to the kingdom of God, this is your church. If this is your home church, uh, this is where you need to be every time the doors are open. Hallelujah. I was talking uh, uh, to some uh, people this past week. Tell them, look, hey, I know there's some things that are tight. There's some things uh, that are going on that seem to be pulling you away from the church. Don't let it happen. Right. Amen. There's nothing more important than what's going on right here. Oh, let me get back to where I need to be. Uh, I like it better when y'all are clapping and hollering and getting excited. Uh, amen. But we've been called out of darkness. I don't want to look like the world. I don't want to act like the world. Uh, amen. I don't want to, hey, uh, the only uh, person that I want to attract uh, is God. Hey Amen. I don't want to attract a. Hey, uh, listen, to, folks. If you know and you know what this church preaches and teaches, Amen. Right. Hey you need to live it when you're in here and when you're out there. Right. You don't put on a different uh, mask when you leave this place. You're a Christian, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes. Amen. And you're Christian from the inside to the outside. Amen. Where you work, everybody ought to know you're a Christian. Not because you tell them you're a Christian, but because of the example that you live. Because you've been called out. Amen. And you need to understand, I've been called out. There's nothing more important. God spoke my name. He said, Crystal, I want you to be a part of my kingdom. I want you to be a part of my family. And there's nothing else that's more important than that right there. Somebody say amen. 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 I've been called out. Amen. Called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Nothing more important than that right there. Matthew, and I, I want to hurry. I want to hurry. Matthew chapter 22. We'll read. I think that's where I need to go. Matthew chapter 22. Verse 14. And this is Jesus spoke speaking here. And we all know this scripture. I mean, we've heard it our whole lives. If you've been around the church any time, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save them that are lost. You see, what Jesus is calling everybody, amen, come unto me, ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is calling everybody, but I want you to understand, when you're, when you're called, once you're called into this, I mean, you've got to You've got to begin to live. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Right. You see, you're chosen because you decide to follow amen, what he's putting out there. I want you to understand, Brother Trenton, uh, you're getting ready. You volunteered to go into the military. God bless you. You wasn't uh, drafted in. You've been, uh, uh, you know, the call was out there, all the nice little ads. Uh, maybe it was uh, something you saw on TV. You saw a little ad. Hopefully that's not what attracted you. Uh, but you saw the poster, amen, that's says, uh, uh, you know, hey, you've been called to be a Marine. Uh, the few, the proud. I don't know if that's their motto anymore, the few, the proud. Uh, the Marines. Uh, uh, but, but Brother Trent, when you go off uh, uh, to, to their, their boot camp, uh, uh, you're going to have to start getting in shape once you're there. Uh, you're going to have to start dressing a certain way. You're going to have to start eating and living a certain way. If it gets down the line and you've not shaped up and you've not molded into what they're trying to make you to be, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get kicked out. Yeah. Oh, that's not very nice. Well, that's, what it, that's the way it is. You've got to line up. You've got to get in shape. You've got to be what they want you to be. Folks, you're called into this kingdom. And now that you're here, God is patient. God is loving. God is kind. God's going to work with you. He's going to give you all that you need to be victor victorious and to have victorious living. But if you don't shape up and you don't live the way that He's wanting you to live, yes, you are saved by mercy and grace. But it's that same mercy and grace that helps make you fall in love with Jesus so that you're willing to say no to a lot of things. And yes to everything that is of God. Hallelujah. I've been called in and out of this world. Many are called, but few 
are chosen. Amen. I want to be one of the ones when Jesus says, hey, I'm ready uh, for us to go here and go there. Hey, pick me, Jesus. Pick me. Amen. You've been called to be a part of this church and to help us see victory in this community. Help us to see revival in this community. How many of you are willing to say, Jesus, pick me. Pick me for the prayer meeting. Pick me for the outpouring. Pick me for the outreach team. Pick me for the one who's going to help pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Who all of us have been called here. Uh, amen. We've got a roster of over a hundred names uh, of people who are a part of this church. Uh, amen. I want you to understand every last one of them have been called into the kingdom of God. Uh, I want you to know I'm called, but I don't only want to be called. I want to be chosen. Uh, amen. Because everybody's called. Uh, amen. But only the elite uh, are chosen. I want to be the elite for Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. It's time that you get off of your seat of do nothing. Start shouting. Start praying. Start getting full of the Holy Ghost. Good preaching. We're going to have a prayer meeting uh, Friday night. Hallelujah. I'm going to be here. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to take any names. Amen, because everybody's called. Amen. We're going to have a prayer meeting. Holy Ghost is going to fall. Amen. We're going to have something, something going to happen here today. Amen. So there's, there's something going on in the spirit here today. I want you to understand there's some people saying, I thank you, Lord, for calling me. But also at the same time, there's another spirit in here that's saying, well, wait a minute. I don't think I want that right there. Oh, you're talking about some things that uh, I really don't I, don't, I don't agree with that. Amen. I want you to understand if it's in the Word of God, you need to agree with it. Break off those heavy bands. Amen. Break off that spirit of rebellion. Amen. That says there's nobody going to tell me what to do. I said this a couple of times from this pulpit. I have went uh, specific. I went directly to a few people and asked you, "Hey, I, I don't want you to do this or do that when you come to church. I want you to make sure that you don't have this or that on." And you continue to do it. That is a spirit of rebellion. The spirit of rebellion. The same thing as witchcraft. So uh, if, if you tell me that, I just won't go to church here anymore. I'll, I'll go somewhere else and find me a church. Okay? It's still the spirit of rebellion. I ask our children and our young people to act a certain way in church. We don't have children's church because a child should learn how to act in church. If you play games with kids uh, from the time they're young until they're old, when it comes time to get into the adult service, uh, they're going to think they're going to come in here and have popcorn and candy, cotton candy, and everything else. Uh, our children need to learn how to act where they're in this church. And yeah, as they're growing, they're two, three, four, five years old, they may not know how to act. But we're training them. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. So our children need to come in here and worship. When you're eight years old, you need to be worshiping the Lord. Folks, I was in love with Jesus when I was eight years old. I was running the aisles. I was on fire. And then I wanted more of Jesus than anybody else. And then I could out-worship any adult in my church. And I want you to know, I, 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 when I get eight, Sister Mona, I want to still have that same spirit and that same attitude. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! You've been called. Uh huh. Yes. Hallelujah. You've been called. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. When you go back in that world, amen, we got to go out there to go to school and go to work. And, and to be a witness, the harvest is out there. We're going out there to reach those who are lost. And when we go out there, amen, our spirit needs to be right. We need to look right from the inside to the outside. My daughter, 
stood firm. And yes, she was raised this way. Yes, it's a uh, guidelines that our family has held because we believe it is scriptural. She's never put on a pair of pants. She went to school her whole life from the time that she was just in kindergarten or preschool and on up. Wearing a dress, wearing a skirt. Of course, people ask after a period of time, why are you wearing a skirt all the, all the time? Why are, you, why are you dressing like that? As a matter of fact, she got the name in her high school. Most people didn't know her name, Caitlin Emily Dublin. She was dubbed the skirt girl. Uh -huh. The skirt girl. Ladies, there's nothing, no shame in that right there. Yeah. Amen. Because you want to know why? If you walk back to that bathroom and you want to try to decide which bathroom to go into, there's an identifying mark uh, or sign outside of that bathroom right there. Amen. I know where to go to. The one that has the pants on, that's where the man goes. The one that has the skirt on, I don't go there. If I do, I'll get arrested. Oh, Hallelujah. It's an identifying mark. Yes. Amen. There are some things that should identify us. Amen. It started a long, long time ago. This split and this, this blurring of the sexes. Yeah. Amen. And that's why, amen, we have the problems that we have in society today. Right. Because we don't want to identify with what we are. Well, I'm going to choose to be something different. I think all of a sudden, I want to be a woman. Well, it doesn't work that way. No. Amen. I was born as a man. Yeah. I can have all the operations. I can put on a skirt, some pantyhose, and some high heels and walk up in here. But you want to know what? I'm still a man. That's right. That's right. God made me a man, and I can't change that. That's right. That's right. I've been called to be a Christian. Yes. And that's the highest calling of anything else in this life. He called me to be a Christian. He called me to follow the authority that is in the Word of God and to submit to some things in my life. Amen. And you want to know what? I'm going to submit to those things. I don't have a problem when somebody preaches or teaches to me. I don't have a problem when somebody tells me, hey, I need to, you need to do this or you need to do that. Because it's in the Word. I'm not going to rebel against it. I'm going to receive it. Yes. Because it's in the Word. I've been called out of this world. We're getting ready, amen, to celebrate 13 years. Amen, 13 years, amen, of victory. 13 years where the devil said you won't make it. As a matter of fact, the devil tried to send so many different things our way. Amen. The devil come against us almost every uh, neck, every time we turn. There's been fighting. There's been breakups. Uh, there's been things that happen here. Uh, there have been people who've given in. We've all failed. Anybody in here been perfect the last 13 years? No. Amen. But you want to know what? God's still working on us. Right. And it's right. time that we get to the point, hey, I'm a part of a church. This is a 13-year-old uh, church. We have been around 13 years. After 13 years, you ought to be victorious. After 13 years, you ought to be able to uh, amen the preacher and then live it, not only in here, out there. After 13 years, there ought to be mamas and daddies, uh, amen, that say, hey, this is what the Word of God says, uh, this is what the pastor says, uh, and this is what's going to happen in our house. If you're not willing to do it, I want you to understand, uh, amen, it might be time. You've been called to be something. And it's time that you live up to that calling. You've been called to be salt and light in this world. And it's time that you start being salt and light. You've been called to be a witness. It's time that you start being that witness. You've been called, amen, to repent of your sins, be baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. It's time, amen, that you do what God has called you to do. 
We got to live it. Amen. There's some time. It, it, it's time, amen, that you make some changes in your home. It's time that you start leading and not making suggestions. It's time that you start speaking forth the, the Word of God. And that you live it. It's time that you realize that God has spoken your name and it's the most uh, important thing that's ever been spoken to you before. It's time that you quit uh, backsliding every two weeks. It's time that you quit whining and belly aching. It's time that you get full of the Holy Ghost. It's time that you stop sinning because you know It's not right. And it separates you from God. It's time that you start obeying the Word of God like never before. Hallelujah. It's time that you set down the law that God has given you and that you live by it. Acts chapter 26 and verse 15 says, and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. See, Paul was being converted. Converted. Everybody say converted. converted. There, if you read, uh, there's about three or four chapters in the book of Acts uh, where it covers the conversion of Paul. It covers the per conversion uh, of, of the Ethiopian. It covers uh, uh, the, the conversion uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of someone else. And I, I can't, it's, it slipped my mind uh, right now. But it covers uh, the conversion. Folks, a conversion is a change. You have been called out and you are to be converted. Something different. You no longer look like the world. You no longer act like the world. You no longer do the things that the world does. And I know in this day and time that that's not popular. I can tell it's not popular by the response I'm getting today. But that's all right. Say, so, well, I can go somewhere else and they, they don't mind if you do this and they don't. You know why? Because they're worried about attracting a crowd. If it's just me and Jesus, I'll make it. Everybody say amen. amen. So well, who's going to pay the mortgage uh, on the church? Well, I'll tell you what. We've got the mortgage on the church set in a place uh, that if I have to sell my house uh, and move into the church, uh, I can afford to pay the mortgage. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. God has called us. He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise up and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness of both, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in, in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles of whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. To turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. God has called you out of darkness into the light. God has called you To live a certain way. To act a certain way. So that when you walk out into this world, there is something that is so different about you. And it starts on the inside. And makes its way to the outside. So you've been called. So well, I don't think, I don't think it's all about all of that. Well, that's why Few are chosen. Because a lot of people, once they get in and they realize what the call of God consists of, that there's a place where you have to lay down your pride and your self-will. 
That it's a place to where you have to say, hey, uh, I can't live that. I can't go there. I can't do this. Why? Because I've been called unto God to be a holy people. To be peculiar. Well, you know what? Peculiar means you're different. You're different from everyone else. Oh, when I get out there, you know, people may, uh, because I don't cuss or I don't drink, I don't smoke, I, I don't go to those places, I don't do those things. I, I, you know, they might point me out. And, hey, don't worry about that. Let the Spirit of God rise up inside of you. And realize that you are to be salt and light. You are to be an example. You see, Jesus was rejected because he came preaching something that was totally different than what the religious people of his day preached. People reject the word of God. And then they twist it and turn it so it fits their ideas. Well, it's okay. No. No. It's not. I need to take this word and apply it to my heart and to my life. The things that God is telling you that needs to be taken out of your life, you need to do it. God is calling you to a place that you don't need. And I want you to bow your heads and I want you to close your eyes right now. God is calling you to a place, young person, mama and daddy, grandma, grandpa, God is calling you to a place to where it's time that you live up to that calling. It's time that you stop battling the same thing that you've been battling because He's given you victory over everything. It's time that you say, Lord, not my will, but Your will be done. You see, God is calling this church to a place of commitment and to a place of revival. God is calling this church to a place to where we're willing to lay down our own lives. To where we're willing to lay down our own time. To where we're willing to lay down our own finances. To where we're willing to say... My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself. I give myself. You see, as mamas and daddies and leaders in this church, we have to give ourselves. And it's not just enough to give of ourselves. We're to turn around and train our children in the same manner that we live this Word. You see, I had to teach my children to stay out of the road when they were young. I had to teach them not to play in the street and to stay close to the house. See, I couldn't just let them go out there and make their own decisions and say, well, they might want to play in the street. You see, as a parent, I've been given the awesome responsibility of making sure that they are protected and taken care of and that they're safe. Not only physically, but also spiritually. There are things that we should never allow our children to make choices of. I don't care how old they get as long as they live in your house because you're the man and you're the woman of God. You've been called to live at a certain place and a certain standard. And you want to know what? If you allow those under your care to live contrary to the Word of God, 
they're not just responsible for themselves. You are going to give an answer. And you also will be held responsible. As pastor of this church, I am responsible for preaching and teaching the Word of God. I am responsible for making sure that not only is this a Bible-based church, but everything about this church lives up to the Word of God 100%. Everything about this church must be not only founded and built upon the Word of God, but it should be the very fiber of our very being as a body of believers. As a Christian, listen to me. As a Christian, you are called to live this Word of God. Not just the parts that you like, but every last bit of it. It's my responsibility to make sure you know what the Word of God says. The Lord is calling us today to a place of repentance. The next couple of weeks we're going to experience revival and we're going to experience some outpouring. We're going to experience uh, some things like we've never experienced before. But before we get to that place to experience the revival and the spiritual outpouring, there's some things that need to take place in your heart and in your life. Get ready to open this altar, but before I do, Tell our musicians we're going to have just the music softly play. I want everybody to come to this altar and begin to repent. Caleb, after you pray for a while, we don't need drums, we don't need our guitar, Brother Kim. I want you to come down here and I want you to pray. We don't need any other praise singers. Caleb, after you have a, a good talk with God, you can let Caitlin go down and pray. Because I, everyone under the sound of my voice said, well, I'm not, I, I can't go up to the altar. Well, please, as you see, repent. There's plenty of room down here if it does get crowded. You can pray at your seat. You can repent at your seat. But before we see the outpouring that God wants to give us, there's some things that need to happen in the hearts and minds of the people, young and old alike, of this church. Our teachers, our musicians, our leaders, we need to find a place and repent. God has called us out. God has called us to be different, to be separate, to let our light shine. God, get a hold of me today. Change me like never before. God, do something inside of me, God. Oh, help us to get to a place to where we're willing to break over the things that do not belong. To where we're willing to allow the Lord to reach down in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, uh, willing to let the Lord mold us and change us. Uh, to where we can reflect His image. Uh, to where we can reflect His image. Uh, to where this world does not see us. Uh, this world sees uh, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, God. Lord, get a hold of me today.